I'm, I'm really glad that you brought up this point and, and Adam, like it, you know, it always happens with any new disruptive or emerging technology, but also with policymakers, there's often a lot of noise uh, and a lot of jargon thrown around. We just saw uh, the COP26, um, you know, summit conclude and, and many of us perhaps feel that enough was not done. Uh, and, and therefore the need for us as individuals, as uh, participants in the ecosystem, uh, we need to do our bit rather than you know relying or depending on um, governments or or multilaterals to kind of necessarily work out uh, the arrangements and and uh, especially with decentralized technologies like blockchain we now have and with smart contracts with NFTs we now have a viable technology solution to achieve those goals. So the you know when we talk about sustainable finance or sustainable fintech, I think the term is at least from our side is very very simple and the name itself. Um, you know, gives the clue. Um, we need to use all the underpinning technologies or underlying technologies that drive fintech, whether it is in terms of um, machine learning, whether it is in terms of blockchain, whether it is in terms of cloud technology, whether it is in terms of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, interactions, all the stuff that has made fintech so powerful and, and also much more uh, of a viable economic uh, operating model, right? Because the cost structure is low, you, you probably don't spend as much to acquire customers, et cetera. So how can you use or leverage these uh, emerging technologies for creating a more sustainable world? And I think from a sustainability perspective, uh, tokenomics has already offered us some clues from the way it has evolved. And, and we've been in the space for quite a while. So we've seen it evolve even in the pre ICO days, et cetera. So the whole concept of a circular economy uh, in, in, in which, you know, kind of, um, what rewards you get is a function of how invested you are in the ecosystem. You just extend it to the real world and, and that's how you get this perfect connection. And therefore I'm glad, um, you know, with the work that I am is doing and, and you spoke about how you have investors using their, you know, staking their uh, tokens uh, to fund real world projects. And that's exactly the kind of bridge we need. We need a bridge between um, you know, what crypto is now, what, 2 trillion plus uh, economy. So it's not insignificant. You can't ignore it. And at the same time, for us in the community, we can't just be guided only by greed or commercial objective. We now have to realize that there is a lot of locked-in potential and that locked-in potential with DeFi, et cetera, uh, with liquidity pools. What if you can create a bridge between uh, you know, the virtual world, the crypto world, and now with the metaverse coming in, there's all the more talk of a virtual world, but also uh, the real world, because you cannot, you know, we can say all we want about the metaverse, etc., but you cannot ignore the fact that the real world needs a lot of uh, support in terms of uh, inclusion as well as sustainability. And that's why uh, we are happy and I'm happy to be here because you guys work at the intersection of all these three, right? You're working at the intersection of cutting edge innovation, you're working at the intersection of uh, inclusion, you know, given that you work in countries like Bangladesh, et cetera, and you're working at the uh, intersection of sustainability in the way you're looking at clean, clean energy and microgrids, et cetera. So I think this is a model uh, to go forward. And, and really we need to build upon this. We need many more of this. We need these things at scale. So, you know, to kind of summarize the scalability we've seen uh, in, in terms of exponential growth of the crypto economy, not just in terms of market cap or market participants, but now it's making a real impact in the real world, in the emerging world, um, is, is what we all need to be more and more conscious about. Um, and, and as I said, you know, you can't have a scenario where uh, the, the decentralized finance world becomes more disjointed from the realities of um the world especially and its challenges as well right so we can't create or we can't have a situation where these technologies increase the divide we have to use this to bridge the gap and, and uh, you know fundamentally these technologies uh, have a, an architecture have a structure uh, have the decentralized model where millions of us can get together to make an impact and therefore we don't need to necessarily depend or, or wait for uh, authorities or policymakers to act. We can do our own bit.